<laughs> Hello. It's uh where are we? It's Thursday the twenty fourth, I think, of August and um I've woken up this morning uh after a really good night of sleep. Uh but unfortunately I'm really not feeling any better today. Uh in fact I'm feeling decidedly worse. Uh, and it's a nuisance because I've still got I've still got an awful lot to do. The the logs behind me are uh, they're waiting for the tree surgeon to uh, come and cut them up into bite-sized pieces for us. Well, you know, not really bite-sized pieces, but pieces that are small enough to go onto our our log burner. And behind me on this side uh, are the chickens who are eating some uh, beetroot leaves. I've just uh, I've just picked up four beetroots out of the garden uh, to well actually we're going to have them with su some with them with supper tonight and the rest I'm going to use to make an apple and beetroot relish. Now, out in the garden this morning I have uh, I've picked a few runner beans and I've picked those couple of. Uh, beetroots for supper and uh, to make the relish which is for storage and I've also picked up a couple of squashes from uh, from the pumpkin patch down at the end there and this morning because I wasn't really concentrating on what I was doing quite so much as uh, staying upright I <laughs> I hang on we've got to fight our way around the There we go. Yeah, it doesn't help having to fight your way around the beans. Um, yeah, because I wasn't really concentrating on what I was doing. I left the gate open between uh, between the adult ducks and the ducklings, which I didn't mean to do. And um, when I came back out just to check everybody was all right and they had enough water uh, about an hour or so later, the ducklings were merrily swimming around uh, in the adult duck pond and the adult ducks were off to one side. Well, looking more than a little disgruntled. So, <laughs> so I have uh, I've herded the ducklings back into their space and, uh, and the, the adult ducks have got theirs again and, uh, and peace reigns once more. Although the ducklings look pretty cross. Oh, ducklings! Are you cross? Thank you to everybody who's left such nice messages uh, regarding me feeling a bit rough. In case you haven't caught one of my bleats about it, uh, I've got Hashimoto's thyroiditis and, uh, and most of the time it's, uh, it's controlled with meds and, uh, and I can just get on with things. And then every now and then it, uh, it catches me unawares and, uh, and I become uh, very tired and in a lot of pain. I'm sorry that I've grizzled quite so much over the last couple of days. I was, I was just a bit taken back by it because usually there's some warning signs that it's on its way, and uh, and this time I, you know, I thought I was getting a bit of a cold. I was a little bit throaty and a bit sniffy and things, like that, but no, it was. Uh, anyway, you know, it was. It is what it is, and um, and in between feeling uh, less than great. Uh, I just I need to crack on because there's still stuff to do there's stuff to harvest and uh, there's a garden to prepare for autumn and then winter and there's chickens to sort out and there's ducks to sort out and uh, and and you know Mr Joe and I need to be able to spend some time together without me uh, <laughs> just being asleep so 
Uh, yeah, so thank you for all your messages. Uh, I will try not to grizzle on about it too much, but just please bear with me while I'm going through this particular blip and uh, and hopefully it will be over and done with before too long. Anyway, I've got blight. Well, no, I haven't. My tomatoes have. And if you're not sure what blight is, it turns perfectly healthy green tomatoes into that in a matter of days and uh, it's a nasty old fungal infection um, that well you can see what it does it just it destroys the plants now if you discover you've got blight in your garden it can affect uh, tomatoes or potatoes uh, and uh, luckily my potatoes uh, didn't get it but my tomatoes have and uh, and actually it's only my outdoor tomatoes and I think that's quite quite typical that your outdoor tomatoes will get blight whereas the indoor ones which are less susceptible to uh, well to fungal spores being in the air and uh, and to fluctuations of temperature or humidity uh, if you get it you need to deal with it fairly swiftly and I've probably left it too late uh, well, I've probably left it a bit too long, uh, but I'm dealing with it now. So what you need to do is you need to remove every single piece of that tomato plant and, uh, and get it into a bag and seal that bag and then take it away elsewhere uh, for it to be burnt. So that could be somewhere else in your garden. Uh, I'm going to take it to an incinerator at the end of the garden and burn it all tomorrow. Uh, and then you need to wash your hands thoroughly and you need to take your clothes off and um, wash your clothes before you go near any other <laughs> plants that are susceptible to blight. So I won't be going back into the greenhouse in the clothes that I'm wearing uh, and I will make sure that I've not only washed uh, me but I'm going to make sure I've washed my boots as well uh, very thoroughly before I head into the greenhouse with my, with my as yet pretty healthy tomatoes. I say they're pretty healthy. They've been munched by that caterpillar uh, that has probably taken out about half my crop. Uh, but I haven't got blight in there as yet. <laughs> Talk about every cloud having a silver lining. While I'm taking these uh, tomato plants out of the ground, I just spotted some seedlings. Now this, this one is an aquilegia. And as is this and this, there's plenty of those. I'm really pleased about that. And then here, uh, that's a little parsnip. And in the path here, a load of parsnips. Uh, but there are some parsnips in the bed here. Now I am very tempted to leave those. I'm sure they'll outgrow these dandelions, particularly if I if I get rid of the dandelions by doing a chop and drop on them. That's exciting, that's exciting. I like this when this happens, um, but there are an awful lot more parsnip seeds there. And there's loads and loads of little seedlings inside that cover. Now, while it isn't my intention for, uh, for the garden just to decide where things are gonna grow, if things are happy there and they've germinated, well, it seems to make sense to leave them. Uh, except <laughs> I guess I run the risk of having parsnips in every bed in the garden. Uh, a bit like the potatoes, they, <laughs> oh, they have a feeling they'll spring up everywhere. This feels like a very natural way to grow things. It feels like, it feels like, you know, if nature can plonk the seeds there and they can germinate, then, you know, unless it's a weed I don't want, why don't I just leave it and, uh, and let it grow? presumably the conditions are fine for it so that would be a, a good moment so dinner duck just did a poop then I'm so sorry so I'll try that again <laughs> um, yeah if the conditions are right for the for the plants to grow then it, it seems to make sense just to leave them to grow and uh, um, it doesn't mean my garden won't be as organized and it means that when I come out to harvest things they're going to be all over the place but I think I'm going to leave some of these and uh, and just see what happens next year. Well, that's it for me today. Uh, 
I'm going to head inside and um, do some stuff on social media and, uh, and do a bit of research online and, um, and just try and sit this out and, and here's hoping that tomorrow I will feel, uh, feel up to doing stuff again but in the meantime wherever you are in the world and uh, whatever you're up to today I hope it's going to be a good one for you and I also hope you can join me again tomorrow.